So welcome to this video on uh, systems of equations. Uh, I'm going to give you a geometric uh, perspective on differential equations or li linear systems of equations. So uh, let me switch over to a writing pad here and we can start doing some math. So here you have a system of equations x prime equal x plus 6y and y prime equal x. So um, the first thing we want to do is we're going to rewrite, oops, we're going to rewrite that as a matrix form. And so we have the matrix 1, 6, 1, 0, multiplied by x, y, and that's x, y prime. OK, so um, as discussed previously, uh, the thing of interest here is obviously this matrix. And what we need to do is calculate its eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So I won't go through that. I'll leave that as an exercise to you to verify or calculate yourself. But what, what you should find is that the eigenvalues are minus 2 and 3. And the eigenvectors, so let's say the eigenvector associated with eigenvalue minus 2 is um, going to be minus 2, 1. Or now you may find a scalar multiple of that, but any scalar multiple of that will do. Uh, and you remember in the general solution, we end up multiplying that by a constant, which is why it doesn't actually matter. Its amplitude doesn't matter, just its direction. And then the um, eigenvalue or the eigenvector associated with lambda equal 3 is 3 and 1. Okay, so, um, so those are eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And what these allow us to do right away is we write down the general solution using them. And the general solution in this case is C1 times e to the minus 2t multiplied by the vector minus 2, 1 plus C2 e to the 3t times 3 times 1. OK, so um, we're going to just take a look at two simple cases here in this video. And then I'm going to leave the more complicated cases to a subsequent video, which I'll address using uh, Desmos. So let's just take a simple case. Imagine you have some well-chosen initial condition that gives you C1 equal 1 and C2 equal 0, which means that the solution vector xy is just going to be the first part of this, e to the minus 2t multiplied by minus 2, 1. So there's two ways of drawing this graphically. One is we can draw an x versus t, and I'm going to make the axis up high here because the x component is initially negative. And so we have x of t goes up here. And because we have a t equals 0, we're at minus 2. So we start down here at minus 2. And what happens to that solution in time is it decays exponentially away to 0. All right, that's the x component. And then the y component. So that one has a positive value, and so we're going to draw the axis this way. And now we go up to 1, and this is the y of t. And that one also decays away exponentially with roughly the same exponential decay constant, or exactly the same exponential decay constant. OK, so the thing that I'd like to introduce here is, whoops, is what I call the phase plane which is instead of plotting x versus t and y versus t, we plot x versus y, where t is kind of invisible, but you think about it as a movie. So if we start off at the point minus 2, 1, that's this point over here. And now think of this as a movie in which as time goes on, that dot moves in the plane. So we'll represent that using lines and arrows instead of actual movies, because I'm drawing with a static pen here. So what we find is that after, let's say, one second, the vector will have remained in the same direction, but it gets scaled by a decaying constant. So after one second, we'll have a big drop. And after two seconds, we'll have a slightly lesser drop because the exponential function decays less and less in increment each uh, unit of time. And so this will continue to decay away to zero. So usually we draw that with a line and arrows indicating, and the size of the arrows often are used to indicate the speed of the movement. And if we had started off with a C1 that was negative and C2 zero, then we would have started on this side and we would have decayed away in in this direction. So this is what's a special direction. These are the eigenvector directions will always lie along straight lines in the phase plane. That's why we choose them. They have 
a nice structure to them. Okay, so uh, without going through the x of t and y of t graphs, uh, but you can do a similar thing with v3, uh, w3. And what that gives you in the phase plane, here now we're going to go at 1, 2, 3, and 1. So that's the initial position of that eigenvector. And it's going to, instead of decay away, it's going to grow outward. And it grows outward a little bit in the first second, and then more in the next, and more. So if I go backwards in time, I could imagine I might have started with a much closer initial condition, and it would come out to that point. So we have a whole bunch of growing vectors or directions movement moving faster and faster. And the same thing is true in the negative direction. We could have come with an initial condition on this side and grown outward along that line. Now, the trickier one to describe is what happens if we start off with an initial condition that is not right on one of the eigenvectors. And there we're going to have to use a combination of the two eigenvectors to describe the full solution. So for those cases out here, c1 and c2 are not equal to zero they're both non-zero and i will leave a description of uh, what those look like and how they form the full picture of the phase plane for a whole bunch of different eigenvalue cases two real positive two real negative one positive and one negative and the complex cases to subsequent videos in which i'll use uh, desmos.com which is a nice graphing calculator application Okay, and that's uh, the end of this one. Thank you.